welcome to the Off Grid Garage in sunny hot Australia again. Happy afternoon! What a beautiful and wonderful day we have today. It is the first time I have seen 79 amps outside. 79 amps. And this is with the new solar charge controllers here. Because we've got almost 4.2 kilowatt peak of solar panels here on the garage. I think the old solar charge controllers, they have just kept the power because they were, they were designed for two kilowatt peak at a 48 volt system now. While these ones, obviously there are four kilowatt per 48 volt system now each, four kilowatt each. Well, eventually if we have upgraded all the solar panels here on the roof, we will have close to 7.1 kilowatt peak here. And I especially selected these ones a bit larger because I always felt the 35 amp were a bit too close to the maximum power they can actually handle. So I didn't went with the 150, 60, but bought the 150, 70, a bit more margin. So we can actually harvest these peaks when they come in, you know? When the clouds are gone, panels are cold, wind is cold, like today, and then BAM! 4.25 kilowatt I have seen. Wow. Just for a few seconds, but it all went into the system. Okay guys, um, I have not seen, well I haven't even published the video yet, it is Sunday afternoon, and um, the video comes out tomorrow morning. This is when I ask you, well, what kind of solution would you prefer, A or B? Having the negative around the covers here, going to the negative bus bar, or are we doing little cutouts here in this cover and have the cables directly connected to the negative bus bar? These were the two options so far. Maybe someone else will comment something that we have an option C here, which I would appreciate as well. Well, we will see. As I said, this video is not online yet, so I don't know what you will actually... Uh, that's a weird cancellation, right? Because if you see this, the other video is already out for a day at least, and we have all the answers, but I don't know them yet, because I'm from the past, but I'm actually from the future. <laughs> Does this make sense? <laughs> anyway, guys, I want to show you... Let me, uh, let me move this one here. Move. Okay, guys, I was busy yesterday the whole afternoon and started with solution C. So this took me a couple of hours to get all the ducting ready here for our cabling. And this is exactly as we have discussed it, right? We're going over the inverters with our AC and down to the AC distribution section here on the right again. And I made this cabling, I made the two ducts here left and right of the inverters exactly the same. So once we replace this one with another multi plus two, we don't have any changes in this ducting at all. We can just pull a new cable in and are ready to go. And that's why I made this little extension here, this little conduit. It fits actually perfectly into the gap over here and down here it goes into the duct and then we have this lid here which then goes on top of it and everything is covered. There you go. Yeah, I have pulled one cable already in here. This is our electric vehicle charger cable which runs in the ceiling here all the way to this cross beam there up there on the other side and down to the vehicle charger. This is another six millimeter cable and thankfully it is just long enough. This was the shortest cable I actually have here. So it just connects to the ground bar here. Whew. Lucky me. Yeah, and as you can see, this is our AC distribution section here on the right. And I made it actually that we have two ducts on either side. So um, I drilled away some holes in here so we can use cables in either side, bottom or top, because this will be our main distribution panel here for all the circuits we have connected to the MultiPlus. So I try to make this as versatile as possible. And the cool thing is, and this is also very, very future proof, because in the future we can just have another panel here and lock this in place and can keep going all the way up there. Well, if we need to, we can also have one down here. 
<laughs> so you can have one, two, three, four, five of these panels and in here as a maximum stage. <laughs> it would be insane. <laughs> but it gives us all the possibilities for the future. So we don't know what is coming, but I am prepared now. This is a very nice section. I'm very happy with that. This actually crossed my mind at, you know, these situations you wake up in the middle of the night and say, oh, that is such a good idea. We will have a second duct on the right hand side as well and then can connect cables from either side. <laughs> exactly that happened to me. And obviously I haven't done anything here on the DC side because I'm waiting for your answer from the future or from the past. Well, depending when you, if you are me now or if you are me in two days time. We will see, we will see, we will find out. And then we have our rubber grommets here, which we will use these two at the moment. And I already have drilled another hole in here for the future for our AC out too, because this will be our, um, our power load dump. If the battery is full and there are still solar available, it turns on AC out too and um, heats up the water, for example, or turns on the pool pump turns the light on, charges the phone, whatever. Because we have this black cover going here onto the multi. Yep, like this. There's a screw down here on this side, which is easy to reach. But obviously this is now covered here on the other side. And hence we have two holes, one in the bottom, one in the top. And we can just use our screwdriver to get to this screw <laughs> there we go that's how we reach this screw <laughs> that's just a maintenance hole yeah well guys what do you say i think it looks pretty good nice right look at our power wall here i'm really happy with that okay so today sunday afternoon we want to pull some cables connect some cables get prepared here because we're not far away connecting our Panzergewinde shelf here to the solar charge controllers and then we will have batteries in the shelf here as well. So today's main task will be connecting the MultiPlus to our distribution board with a 6mm cable and also have the generator here connected. I call it the <laughs> generator. It's the Phoenix Inverter Smart 3 KVA. We will connect this one here to a actually second switchboard this one here already we will connect this inverter to this switchboard and even more important how much power can this one output on top of this one this will be the main question i'm really keen to see this working okay let's get started i have to take this cover off again this is our combined output dam all right let's get started with the cabling and thank you again for tuning in today it is so good to have you back here on the channel. So this is all what it's left from our ducting 8 meters so far. And I need another 4 meter length. So I need to go back to Hammonds tomorrow and buy another 4 meter length. And this will then be for the uh, DC supply for our both inverters. Just haven't got enough anymore. But I'm really keen to see how much it will cost tomorrow. <laughs> I cannot... I cannot get this strain relief off here. No chance. As always, one side is too high and then it sticks on the thread here of these rods there's no way <sighs> yeah see all these marks in there i've done this before it goes only that far then it's stuck it is just stuck now no it's already too far in on this side here there's no way no way Victron, come on. And I see these are the same shitty ones here. They are just so bad. 
And you would imagine if you pull straight, you could take them out, but not, it's not. Uh. This is like already five minutes and we haven't even started yet. Look at white shit here on my head. Boy, I finally got them out. <laughs> so much better. 4.5 millimeter hole works. Come on, Victron. Okay, we made our first connection. Reconnecting the Phoenix Inverter Smart. Smart means it has uh, Bluetooth. Uh, everyone knows that already, right? Smart. I'm um, I'm standing on this paint bucket again. Uh, the side cutter, guys. We certainly don't want this MEN link in here because the um, the inverter has a built-in MEN link. We don't need a second one. So this is now our incoming power from the grid. Goes all the way up there and to this circuit breaker here. And here from the output of the circuit breaker, we are going back. And this will be the input of this inverter. AC out, AC in. Ah, they seem to have fixed it already. Yeah, they drilled larger holes in these nylon parts. Okay, and this time we're going um, straight here at the crossing and coming from the other side, which I had in my dream. Up to here, here, and then down. This one needs to be connected at the bottom here, so here. Side cutter, here. So we have now successfully wired the output of this inverter with the input of this inverter. And obviously this goes through our distribution panel here. We've got a 16 amp fuse in between, so we can manually disconnect the connection between the two inverters. If it gets too smoky in here, uh, that'll be an interesting experiment and a very expensive one either. <laughs> so the only thing we need to do is connect a uh, ground wire from here uh, all the way down to our main ground bar in here. Once we've got the link to the ground bar connected, we don't actually have to connect the ground inside the inverter anymore here. Um, the same for the multi plus here. Well, in saying that, I'm not 100% sure if this is true for this one as well, for the Phoenix inverter, but it is true for the multi plus two. You don't have to connect the earth point separately if you have a non-removable power supply as the input here, which we have. But in this case, because it is a stationary installation, we have all the grounding done in there. We don't need to connect this. It says this in the manual. And I have a look in the Phoenix manual as well, if this is the case here too. 
Okay, so and as the next step, we will connect our AC output of the MultiPlus all the way up there, solution C all the way down here and connect to our main switch here in the distribution panel. And then we've got this double neutral active face bar down here, which connects all our RCDs together. So we just need to connect our load circuits up here and then we are done. Sweet. Okay, and now we have connected the output of the multi to the input of our main switch over here. So, and for now we don't need any more cables in this duct here. So we can actually use some, um, this here might be it. Ha, there we go. And we also don't need to put any more cables in this top duct here either. So let's find the lid. <laughs> nice. See, I wanted to ask you a question and couldn't remember and it just crossed my mind again. Victron always says to make sure if you have multiple inverters that they have the same length DC cables. And I was always wondering why that is. I can potentially understand this in a pure three-phase environment where the inverters have exactly to match. But if you don't use any three-phase load on your circuits, even if it is a three-phase system, it shouldn't make a difference at all. And I guess certainly not in my circumstances here, in my setup, they will have, they will have different length of DC cables here, right? So I'm not making the MultiPlus here having the same length of DC cable as the Phoenix inverter because there's, there's no reason for it. There are two different separate inverters. So I'm not sure under which circumstances this makes sense and why. Do you? Yeah, that makes so much sense. Because if we... Um, well, if this um, daisy chaining stuff doesn't work or the inverter only outputs 3 kVA, we can always split everything up again here in these two distribution boxes then. And then move some of the circuits from here into this box. And this is for one inverter, this is for the next inverter. So completely separate then. Yeah, this, this cable ducting makes a lot of sense. It keeps us super, super flexible. <laughs> 